Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at this problem that is called reversing a sublist in a linked list. And this is a pretty important problem, so let's get right into it. So uh, this problem tells you that you're given a linked list and you need to reverse a portion of that linked list. You need to reverse a sublist in that given linked list. So for instance, we've been given a list here, which is this original list. It starts off at one and each of these elements are labeled with some number. So each of these elements has a value to them. For example, the first element has the value one, then we have two, three, four, five, and then in the end we have six. And after six, we have a null pointer, which denotes the ending of the linked list, right? So what we are told here is that we're given a start and an end position. And we need to reverse all the uh, nodes that are, that are present between the start and the end positions in that given linked list, right? So for instance, I've highlighted the nodes here, which occur between the start and the end positions. So for instance, in this uh, linked list, in the first given linked list, we have three, four, and five that occur in, the, in between the start and the end pointers. And what we're supposed to do is, we're supposed to reverse the nodes that are present between these two positions. So what we end up with is this reversed sublist where these highlighted nodes are present in the reversed order. So three, four, five ends up as five, four, three. So how will we do this? Uh, this is like a three pointer approach. You need to keep track of three pointers and then you need to iterate through this entire sublist. So how do we do that? Let's get right into it. All right, so how does this approach work? All you really need to understand here is that the logic in itself is pretty simple. It's just the implementation part that's a little bit tricky. So the logic is very simple. All you need to do is simply start off at the second element of the linked list and just pick that up, extract that out and place it in the front. Then go to the next element and do the same thing with that. Extract that element and place it at the front of that current sublist. I have written all the, these three nodes of the sublist separately from the rest of the linked list so that I can uh, demonstrate that a little better. So we see that we have the elements three, four, and five in the sublist. We need to reverse this. We start off at the second element. What we do is we take this element, we cut it out of the sublist, and we paste it in the front. So let's say I pick this element out and I place it in the front. And what the sublist becomes is something like this. It becomes four, three, and five. Now, once I've uh, removed that fourth element, I move on to the next element in line, which is uh, element number five. What I do is I pick this element up again in the same manner that I picked up four. I cut it out. I simply cut this element out and I place it in the front of the list and I get something like this. So this is what the reversed sublist looks like. And that's all we really need to do in this entire program. And you can actually extend this to any number of elements. And that's a pretty trivial task. All you need to do is start off at the element after the first element of the sublist and just keep picking each of these elements up one by one, extract them and add it to the front, extract them and add it to the front. Oh, that's all you really need to do. But it's a little bit tricky to implement this using linked lists. So let's understand how we'll do that. So what we see here is that we always need a way to access the front of the reversed sublist. Because while we are reversing the sublist, we always need access to the front of the list because that is where we'll be adding new elements. So for instance, we'll always need access to this pointer, which will point to the front of the sublist at that particular moment when we are extracting an element and adding it to the front. So we need a pointer to always point to the front of the list. So let's call that node before reversed sublist, right? Secondly, we always need to have access to our working pointer. The working pointer is basically which will help us to iterate through the list. The, it is the actual pointer that will be iterating through the list. So we'll be starting off at the first element. The working pointer will start off at the first element of your sublist. So it will be present somewhere here. Right, so it starts off at the first element. Next, we need access to the element that we need to extract from the list. The, the part of the list that we need to cut from the current sublist and paste in the front. So we need access to the current element to be extracted. So we'll name that node to be extracted. 
So the, uh, the node to be extracted in this case will be this node number four, right? This one, this node is the one that we'll start off with extracting in the first part of our algorithm and we'll paste it in the front. So we need access to this. This is essentially the next pointer, the next pointer of the working pointer. It's the next, it's the next node of the working pointer. So we'll access this using working pointer dot next or arrow next, depending on which language you're using, right? So we need access to this element as well. And we'll call this node to be extracted, right? And now we'll start off with the actual algorithm. All we just have to do is first off, get the node to be extracted. How will we get that? We'll simply write node to be extracted equal to working pointer next because the next pointer of the working pointer will always be pointing to the node to be extracted. After that, we need to cut it out of the, uh, of the sublist, right? We need to remove it from the sublist. So how we, how we'll do that is simply make this working pointer. We need to make this working pointer, skip this element and rather point to the next element in line so that it essentially gets cut off from this sublist. So what we'll do is we'll make the next pointer of the working pointer point to the next element of the node to be extracted. So we'll essentially make it skip this node and point to the node after the node to be extracted. So it will become something like this, right? Now, what we need to do is that we need to make uh, we need to perform this in code. So what we'll do is we'll write something like this. We'll write working pointer next, and that will point to the next element of node to be extracted. Now we need to cut this node out properly. We need to unlink it from pointing to the next element to rather pointing to the front of the sublist, right? Because we need to place this in the front. So what we'll do is we'll make the next point of this node to be extracted point to the first element of the sublist. So how do we point that point to that? We already kept track of this node before the sublist. So wherever the node before the sublist points, the next element is always the front of the sublist. So what we need to do is we need to make the node to be extracted point to the next element of node before the sublist because it points to before the sublist. So we need to make the next pointer of node to be extracted point to the next pointer of node before sublist, which will essentially be the first element in the current list. So what we'll write this as is we write this something like this, right? So this, uh, this just means that the next pointer of the node to be extracted, this pointer essentially will now point to the first element of the sublist, which will look something like this. So we'll extract that pointer out and we'll make it point to this first element. And we'll essentially just remove the older pointer because we would have replaced it with the new connection, which will be this blue arrow that you see on the screen, right? So if I write this in a more simpler manner, uh, what I'll do is I'll just place the fourth uh, node before the third one. I'll do that in a bit. Because before we do that, we need to update the next pointer of the node before sublist as well, so that it can po point to the new starting of the uh, current working sublist. So how we'll do that is that we need to make this pointer, the next pointer point to four, right? So that we can actually finish off this extraction and pasting procedure. So what that will look like in code is something like this. So it will say something like node before sublist next equal to node to be extracted and that will make this pointer point to this fourth element and it will look something like this. I'll redraw this and make it look a little bit neater. So this uh, in the next uh, illustration that you see, this pointer, this next pointer of the node before sublist will be pointing to the node to be extracted and it will look something like this. So this is what the sublist will look like after all these uh, uh, instructions have been executed. And, and what the result would be that a node to be extracted is now at the front of the sublist and the node before the sublist points to this new front, right? Now, we've finished one iteration of this entire, uh, of these four instructions, right? And now we need to 
continue on with this until start is smaller than n. Now if you run another iteration, the first instruction says that the node to be extracted equal to the next pointer of the working pointer. So now this node to be extracted will be updated to point to the fifth element which will look something like this. After that we see that the next pointer of the working pointer will be made to point to the node to be extracted next which will essentially be the sixth element right it will be outside the current sublist which will kind of denote that we'll be uh, finishing off with this procedure soon so what will happen is this pointer will now point to six and the older uh, and the older pointer will be replaced with the new connection right similarly the next uh, instruction says that the node to be extracted next equal to node before sublist next which essentially means that we'll connect the next pointer of the node to be extracted with the front of the sublist which will be element number four or the element with the value four right here and how do we access it we access it with the next pointer of node before the sublist right so what this will kind of mean is that this pointer will now point to the first element of the sublist essentially replacing the older connection making it look something like this right so if you move on to the next instruction it says node before sublist next equal to node to be extracted which essentially means that we need to update the next pointer of the node before sublist and make it point to the new first element of the list which will be the node to be extracted and that will complete the extraction and the pasting procedure right so what this will do is this will essentially replace this pointer and make it point to the node to be extracted so this looks kind of messy so i'll just redraw this to make it look a little better so this is what it actually looks like when we just redraw this entire circuit right so this is what it will look like and we see that we've reached the end of the sublist and this is when we will stop right so this is basically how this algorithm will work and we'll just continue this on until we've iterated through the entire sublist right so let's see how we'll write this up in code all right so here we are in lead code and let's begin coding the solution out the first thing that i'll do is rename these parameters from these horrible names which are which is m and n which is not at all clear so i'll name them start and end so that it's a little bit clearer what we're trying to do the first thing that i'll do is simply check if uh, we have any null conditions that is if the head is null or if the start or the end pointers are e actually equal in which case we don't have to do anything and simply return back the actual head itself so if the head is null or if the start is equal to the end in both these conditions we just have to return back the head pointer now we need to define a dummy head so that we always know where the actual head of the list is so that when we've done all the uh, cut and cutting and pasting we don't actually lose track of the actual head of the list then we need to return it back at the end of the algorithm so just to keep track of the head i'll just define a list node called dummy i'll initialize that with a random value let's say zero and the next pointer of the dummy will point to the actual head of the list like so now we need to define the uh, node before sublist pointer that will point to the node before the actual sublist that you need to reverse so i'll just name that as list node star because it's a pointer node before sublist equal to dummy because it will start off at the dummy pointer itself and this is a pointer so we'll have to start off with uh, the actual address of the dummy pointer so we use the ampersand sign now we need to move it until it reaches the node before the sublist. So for that, we'll define another variable which will define its position. So I'll call that pause and I'll initialize that with one. Now while pause is smaller than start, while this is, this is true, I'll keep uh, incrementing the node before sublist to the next uh, to the next node in line. So I'll just write So node before sublist equal to node before sublist next, which, which will simply just move it uh, to the next pointer, right? And after that, I'll just increment pause and this will just go on until it hits the start element. And then we won't increment it any further because we want to stop just before the actual sublist that we need to reverse starts. 
Now we need to define the working pointer, which will simply be the next point of this node before sublist because that will essentially be the starting of the list. So we'll just uh, write auto uh, working PTR equal to node before sublist next, right? So now it points to the next element of the node before sublist, which is essentially the start of the actual sublist. Now we'll start off with the actual algorithm. So this algorithm will run until start is smaller than n because once it becomes equal to n, we just have to stop and we don't really need to perform any reversing and everything. Now we need to write the, uh, now we need to get the node to be extracted. The node to be extracted as we saw in the whiteboard explanation earlier is simply the next node of the working pointer. So we'll just write an auto node to be extracted equal to working PTR next. I just use auto because it's a lot easier than writing node as list node, list node every time, right? So once you've done that, we need to reconnect the next pointer of the working pointer to the next element of the node to be extracted as we saw in the explanation earlier. Right? And I know these variable names are a little long, but it really helps with the explanation. That's what I believe, right? So I just keep these names as ex as explanatory as possible, right? And once you've done that, we need to move this node to be extracted to the front of the list. So we'll make the next pointer of the node to be extracted point to the first element in that sublist. And now we need to reconnect the node before sublist to this new head or the, to this new front of the list. And once you've done that, we just need to increment the start pointer so that uh, we can actually terminate this condition when it becomes equal to n. And once you've done that, we just need to return the next pointer of the dummy because that will point to the actual head of that list at that point. And once you've done that, let's see if this runs. And it does. So let's submit this. And it runs in zero milliseconds, faster than 100% of the CPP submissions. And we have a great memory usage as well. So this is how you solve this problem. And if you learned something new, be sure to smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more future content. And if you have any other questions, uh, just put them down below in the comments. And as always, the code will be in the description. So check that out as well. And I will see you in the next video.